change is part of the human condition. Paradigm shifts, shifts of any kind, are so a part of the human condition. Um, they're part of the human story. I'm sure you guys have seen different versions of this descent of man image. Uh, now, there are two problems with this particular image. Um, the first, um, where are the women? <laughs> uh, I mean, we love men, but they weren't doing this all on their own. Um, the second is that this gives the impression that evolution is linear, right? That one thing leads to the other, leads to the other. But actually, evolution is more like a bush. It's more like a tree. See, one of the most fascinating things for me about human evolution, the thing that even when I'm talking to you right now, it gives me like tingles, is that this is the only time in human evolution that only one species of human has walked this earth. We are alone, and we never used to be alone. We used to live in a world where multiple species, <laughs> multiple species shared this planet with us. So some of the names you'll be familiar with, Neanderthals or Homo neanderthalensis, you'll know them. Um, some others you may have heard of. You may have heard of the Hobbit, which is, we know technically as Homo floresiensis. You may have heard of a, a new species called Naledi. We shared the planet with all these incredible creatures. And we may have made war with each other, but we don't know. But what we do know is that we definitely, definitely made love with them. And that is incredible to me because I'm like, oh my God, it was literally Lord of the Rings. <laughs> there were all these species and we're all having fun with each other. It's one. Paleoanthropology is a bit like a jigsaw. I always describe it as like this jigsaw and you've been given the pieces, well, you've been given a handful of pieces, but nobody's told you how big the jigsaw puzzle is. So like, let's say you've been given 50 pieces and you don't know if the jigsaw is 50 pieces 70 pieces or 50,000 pieces, you've got no idea. And the only way you can fill in the gaps and actually construct the whole image is to get more data. Um, and therein lies the problem, uh, because to do that, you need to explore the whole planet. Um, this is a map of the human journey. See the map of the human journey? This is the human journey that we took, that our ancestors took. Now, this is a map of all the places that the British Foreign Office have declared contain red zones, orange zones, or politically unstable areas. <laughs> what, did our ancestors just teleport? Are we supposed to not look in all these places? It, it's a really big problem. People think sometimes that, um, you know, I work in politically unstable and hostile territories because I'm an, adre an adrenaline junkie, and that's not the story at all. I um, mean, as much as I like to terrify my poor mother, that's not really what's going on. <laughs> Just a side note, uh, my brother's a journalist. At one point, he was a hard news journalist as a war correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> We used to take it in turns to tell my mother information because we were like, let's just not completely give her a heart attack. Um, so I would argue that it is a tragedy for science if we are not doing work in these places because we are essentially biasing our data. I want you to think about a country like the UK. How many scientists, archaeologists, academics live in the UK? And yet we are still finding new caves, we are still finding new archaeological sites, we are still finding fascinating biodiversity answers and questions, uh, our answers to questions, rather. Now think about a country like Iraq or Yemen or Somalia. There are so few academics that have been working there. So logically, logically, that's where the next big discoveries will be made, right? That's the front line of exploration. Those are the places that aren't saturated. But I would also say that it's a tragedy for these places that we're not doing science there. It's incredible. Imagine finding a new species of human without a fossil. That's the world we now live in. And I thought that was crazy until this happened. So um, there used to be, well, there still is, uh, on an excavation, um, you get a lot of undiagnostic bone. So by that, I mean that they're little shards of bone that we just don't know. We're not even sure they're human. They might be any kind of animal. You put them into a bag, you put undiagnostic on it, and you send it off to a museum somewhere. Um, and this new technology came about called Zoom MS. 
Um, and using ZooMMS in combination with ancient DNA, they discovered that these little bits, these little sh shards of, uh, of bone from a Siberian cave were a hybrid species that was literally 50% Neanderthal and 50% Denisovan, and they called it Denny. We cannot predict where the next big discovery is coming from. We can't predict which bits of science are the most worthy of funding. We just have no idea. It's a guessing game. But we can identify our biases and see where they're leading us, which can sometimes be a problem.